Hello and welcome to Weathersnap. I'm Claire Nazir. And I'm Alex Deakin. And today, again, we're talking storms, tropical storms and the colder North Atlantic versions that reasonably frequently hit our shores. And in direct contrast, a warm welcome back to high pressure. Woohoo! Yes. Uh, but first, uh, yes, let's deal with the low pressures and some intense ones as well. Events unfolded very, very quickly earlier this week across the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Hurricane Idalia intensified, strengthened rapidly and tracked towards and then across Florida. Yes, in a moment, we'll be getting the lowdown and the latest from our very own Julian Hemming, tropical prediction scientist. But let's backtrack to Wednesday, only a couple of days ago, but so much has happened since then. Now, uh, a local weather forecast office, that's the National Weather Center in the US, they have local offices right across the US, and there's one at Tallahassee in Florida, and they issued a stark statement on Wednesday. Now, the headline was... If you ever wanted to know how many major hurricanes have ever hit the Apalachee Bay, the answer is zero. And it goes on to say, Hurricane Adelia will likely be an unprecedented event for many locations in the Florida Big Bend. Looking back through recorded history, no major hurricanes have ever moved through the Apalachee Bay. When you try and compare the storm to others, don't. No one has ever seen this. This is your last day to get prepared. Preparations need to be rushed to completion by sunset. If ordered to evacuate, leave. Conditions rapidly deteriorate tonight. So that was the statement issued by the local weather centre in Tallahassee. Big words. Yeah, I hadn't realised how few storms or major storms have hit that. I mean, obviously, the, you know, we've we've seen Gulf of Mexico and, and storms over recent years, but I didn't realise that, yeah, no major storms had hit. There was a big map of, of all the storms that hit Florida, and there were so many of them around the bottom there. As you said, no major hurricanes in that part of the world ever seen before. Yeah, I think one of the reasons is sea surface temperature. Mm. And in fact, that has now changed this year, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been really warm, the seas, 30, 31 degrees Celsius. Uh, normally, the warmer seas are closer to the uh, Yakutan Peninsula, but the, the the hot weather that we've seen throughout the summer across southern parts of the United States means that we've seen uh, marine temperatures also rise as well. Light winds have also allowed the, the warmer seas to develop, and that means you know hurricanes just get fueled. And that's, that's what fuels these hurricanes, temperatures in the sea over 26, 27 degrees, but the higher those numbers, the more rapidly the storms can intensify. And that's what we saw early on Wednesday morning. Actually, Idalia peaked at a Cat 4 uh, hurricane. Obviously, it only goes up to five. So, you know, only one level off the top. Uh, and it intensified briefly to that to that Cat 4. Still over those very warm seas. Just before it made landfall, the peak winds did drop just a little bit as the pressure started to rise as well. And this was due to something called an eye wall replacement cycle. I'm no expert on eye wall replacement cycles, but thankfully we know someone who is. Julian Hemming is here to explain more. Well, all tropical cyclones which reach a certain strength, which reach hurricane or typhoon strength, will have an eye. And typically the the strongest winds are around what we call the eye wall, which is the edge of the eye. And sometimes that eye wall starts to contract inwards and get very, very small. Sometimes it can be as small as, say, about uh, 10 miles across. And when that happens, the wind strengths can increase and can be very, very strong. So actually the the strongest uh, tropical cyclones we've had in history are ones with very, very small what we call pinhole eyes. But sometimes that can happen and then that inner eye can kind of collapse in on itself and an outer eye, which is developing, which is much, much wider, can take over. When that happens, the wind strengths uh, decrease near the centre because the inner eye has, has collapsed and then the outer eye takes over and the winds are a little less strong. And then sometimes you can get a repeating cycle whereby the outer eye starts to contract into the centre again. Hurricane Idalia did start to undergo an eye wall replacement cycle just as it approached land, but it actually occurred only a few hours before landfall. So it actually didn't allow the uh, the wind speeds to decrease too much before it made landfall over Florida. Back to Julian in a moment for the latest. But interestingly, Florida is a relatively large state. Now, it is dwarfed by Texas, obviously, and other large states towards the western side of the U.S., 
But how many times bigger is it relative to the size of Wales, Alex? Well, what's the international uh, sign of size comparisons, isn't it, Wales? Yeah. How many Waleses can you fit into Florida? Ooh, uh, six? It's eight. Oh. Yeah. So even though Florida doesn't have many hurricanes, there was one just 11 months ago on the 28th of September, and that was Hurricane Ian. And it pummeled again across the western coast of Florida, but it was just slightly further south. Now, it was a catastrophic um, storm causing just huge amounts of flooding, the deadliest hurricane to hit Florida since 1935. And then just 11 months later, Hurricane Idalia hits, but further north across what they call the Big Bend, the Floridian Big Bend. So it made landfall at 11.45 uh, near Keaton Beach, and it tracked north, northeastwards across the state whilst weakening. Greatest impacts were, obviously, storm surge was massive, around mm. 11 feet at the very highest relative to Hurricane Ian last year, which was 15 feet. So that was a cap four when it hit. This one was a high cap three. And then obviously power outages, flash flooding, urban flooding, river flooding. It was a powerful form. It really packed a punch and only news stories just trickling in now because obviously all those power outages. It has been downgraded, but still got life left in it. Here's Julian Hemming. After Hurricane Idalia made landfall over Florida, the wind speeds decreased and it was downgraded to a tropical storm. There was still a lot of heavy rainfall over parts of southeastern USA. And then the circulation of Idalia moved out over the Atlantic Ocean. And there was a point where it was then declared post-tropical. Now, what that means is that it no longer has really strong and deep storm clouds associated with it. So it's not considered a tropical cyclone anymore. But the circulation is still there and it's very slow moving around the Western Atlantic at the moment. And from the forecasts that uh, we see from the, the computer models at the moment, we expect that the storm clouds may start to develop again. And it's possible that Idalia might regain tropical storm status when it's fairly close to Bermuda over the next few days. So there may be some impacts over Bermuda from that, um, but we don't expect it to become a hurricane again. And then we expect uh, Idalia to then meander and move slightly to the, the north over the next uh, few days and will eventually dissipate further north over the Atlantic. Finally, Julian, Hurricane Adalia at its peak was a Category 4 hurricane. And a similar strength hurricane is currently approaching Hong Kong as we speak on Friday morning. Yes, we have tropical cyclone activity in the Western Pacific as well. There's several storms there at the moment, but the most significant one today is uh, Typhoon Saula, which is... A um, matter of only uh, a few uh, miles offshore of Hong Kong with extremely strong winds, equivalent to a, a borderline Category 3, Category 4 storm, uh, which means that uh, we could get some severe impacts from, from winds over Hong Kong. There's going to be heavy rain as well. Uh, it's possible that the eye might just stay offshore, but the eye wall, which is where the strongest winds are, are likely to, to hit Hong Kong. And so we could see some impacts there from some very strong winds over the next 24 hours or so. That was Julian Hemming. And if you want more, make sure you're following the Met Office Storms feed on X, formerly Twitter. Um, so it's just burst into life. The Atlantic hurricane season and generally across the northern hemisphere it has been a, a very active season. Looking back at our storm season, it was obviously fairly quiet storm season runs from September the 1st until August the 31st. So until yesterday, we only had those two named storms in our A to Z of storms, although there were a couple of others named by others that did affect the UK. But for our named storms, we had Storm Anthony, 5th of August. Highest wind gust recorded from that was at Berry Head, 78 miles an hour in South Devon, and also a gust of 56 miles an hour in Cornwall. Uh, and those were provisionally new highest wind gusts for the month of August. August. And uh, yeah, that was the first of our named storms. And then... Yeah, Storm Betty, that arrived just a couple of weeks later on the 18th of August, named by Met Erin. Greatest impacts were across the Republic of Ireland, but it was still a hefty storm for the UK as well. In a minute, we'll be revealing the names for this current season from the 1st of September. Alex, what's your, what's your best name? Hot off the press today. Uh, well, I like Storm Betty. 
I mean, I love Storm Betty. I think that's a great name. My gran was called Betty. And, you know, she'd have been very proud to have yeah. a storm named after. And I think that's it just gets people's attention, doesn't it? I think, I mean, you talked about Hurricane Ian earlier. I don't think Ian, I mean, I just think of Ian Beale. And it doesn't really, doesn't really terrify me, Storm Ian. Uh, but Storm Betty's just got a good ring about it. People will, people will know. People will, you know, ooh, Betty and all that. It's got to resonate. It's got to, it's got to, it's got to. <laughs> no, kids yeah. ask your parents. Um yeah, so it's got to resonate. It's got to have that so that people take notice and people talk about it. That's the whole point of that's why we name storms is to get people talking about it so that it does raise awareness so that people more people are aware that there's severe weather on the way. And we know that it works. You know, we've got a lot of evidence to over the over the years from doing it seven or eight years now that people do respond to to storm names. It gets more media coverage. Uh, traditional media and social media and people do take notice and we've got lots of evidence to say that people do respond and do act because they know a storm is coming yeah i mean i think storm electra is a very good one and i have a good reason mm -hmm. because it was one of the characters in my kids books about weather so storm oh, electra right. obviously it just speaks volumes doesn't it you know has there been a storm electra no it's, I oh, think right, I've got okay. copyright so on that. They can't touch that one, no. Uh, but yes, Electra, I think, is a very good one. And in fact, in the current list from the 1st of September, there's an absolute screaming belter of a name, which I absolutely think is the right one for, for any storm. So do you think you can guess which one it is? Well, I'm, so we reveal the names then. Yeah. So the storms are out today. Hot off the press. The storms have been released. For the full list, check out any of our social media. But it starts with A, Agnes. That's a strong name, I think. Then it goes uh, Barbet, Kieran, Debbie, Ellen, Fergus, Gerrit, Henk, Aisha, Jocelyn, Kathleen, Lillian, Minnie, Nicholas, Olga, Piet, Regina, Stuart, Tamiko, Vincent, and Walid. So some good names there. I'm struggling to pick one out, but you think you've got a really good favourite in there. Have you? What is it? Regina, the queen, ah, okay. the queen of storms. Regina, yeah, I think Regina Spectre. Yeah. I think of. Yeah, no, that is a good name. It's a that good, is a good one. one. I mean, I, I don't think we've ever got to R. I don't think we have, have we? No, we haven't. No, no. no. I don't think we've been past K, have we? But um, I like Henk. I think Henk is a good name. Henk is good. I like them yeah. short. And easy, easy to easy to pronounce. That. Yeah, but nothing can beat Betty. I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I mean, and it's not just the UK. We've had a storm, Betty, but they're they're quite popular around the world, aren't they? Yes, you are really in the majority there when it comes to a name. Um, how many times do you think Betty's been named as a storm around the world? Globally, there's yeah. been storm Betty's around the world. Because uh, mm -hmm. you think of that as a fairly traditional British name, wouldn't you? Um, I don't know. Has there been five storm Betty's? 22. Whoa. 22 storm Betty's. It's been a tropical storm. It's been a hurricane. It's been a typhoon, as well as a cyclone, and then a northwest storm in northwestern parts of Europe. Storm Betty, named by Met Aaron. So, yes, you are in good company there with Storm Betty. Anyway, let's look back at the last three months very, very briefly, because I think most people want to just pop it out of their minds, really, because the summer of 2023, a bit of a damp squib, particularly when the schools broke up. Yes, we did have a heat wave in June, but July and August were, I'm going to say, disappointing for those who were staycationing. Where did you go on holiday, Alex? Wales, yes, yeah. Exactly. We had, you know, half the week was a bit wet. The other half was all right. It was, it was, you know, you've just got to get the right clothes, haven't you, as they say. Uh, <laughs> yes, no, people forget that June was incredibly warm, the, the warmest June on record. So that has really bumped the stats, hasn't it? So summer is June, July and August. However you measure summer, it's up to you. But meteorologically or climatologically, summer is the three months of June, July and August. So that has now finished. We are now technically in meteorological autumn. But it was a very warm summer on the whole because of that June, because June was so exceptional that all averages out to one of the top 10 warmest summers on record. And wetter than average, which doesn't come as any surprise. In fact, yeah, we've seen some heavy rain here up in the northwest of England. So much so, as I said just the other day, we had a flood. So, and I'm, our house wasn't the only one. I think Northern Ireland saw some flooding through the summer as well. So, yeah, we've seen some heavy rain. Looking forward to the next four or five days, Alex. Whew. Welcome. Warm. Sunny dry we're sort of nodding and shaking thinking with relief here that at least the last weekend before the kids go back they'll be able to have a blast of sunshine 
it is high pressure. And people will always say, oh, it's the kickers. But if you're in Scotland, you went back a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, they've already oh, God, been yeah, back. Sorry. So yeah. it's really nice just to write the weekend headline, drier, sunnier, warmer. High pressure is moving in, thanks in part to what's been going on out in the tropics. So ex-Hurricane Franklin is moving north, and that's buckling the jet stream, bringing high pressure. Aidan goes into a lot more detail on that in the 10-day trend, so you can catch that on our YouTube channel. But, yeah, high pressure is moving in. Still be a few showers around on Saturday, particularly over central and eastern parts, but they'll be pretty well scattered. Most places having a dry weekend, some sunshine, and feeling a bit warmer as well. Temperatures back into the low 20s. So I think many people will be very happy about that. But high pressure, finally moving back in for the UK. Well, that's fantastic. It's always good to end on a high. Well, let's not end on a high. Let's end on an argument because um, this is not an Indian summer, right? <laughs> Just to clarify, the meteorological definition of an Indian summer has to be October, has to be November, has to be after a frost. Yeah. I think, I've told you this before, I think we've lost this argument. I think no, we Indian haven't. summer no, we is haven't. just this a nice spell of Yes, so Indian summer happens later on. This is an extension of the summer. Meteorologically, it finished yesterday, but even so, we are seeing some summer weather as we enter September. Brilliant, that's it. Um Unless, unless we actually do get a couple of really bad frosts and I'll be hoisted by my own petard, won't I? Because that really <laughs> definitely would have been an Indian summer definition or sort of panned out. Anyway, Alex, really good to have your company, um, as always. We'll be back next week with more Weather Snap. Please do subscribe, comment, like our podcast. You can get it on all the podcast channels as well as on YouTube. And we hope you have a good weekend. Enjoy the sunshine. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Another great weather snap, Claire. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Then you catch all of our daily weathers on YouTube as well. And if podcasts are your thing, check out our Met Office podcast channel. Lots of information, lots of stories there. And we'll see you again next week.